Welcome to Instant Deck Techs. The aim of this series is to give you a short, concise guide on how to build a certain deck. It won't cover every card, but we'll go through all the categories and go over the types of cards needed to make the deck work. Any card mentioned will be down in the description below. The commander of this deck is Guillaume Master Chef. It is 2 black green for a 5 3 legendary creature Troll Warlock with Trample. It has, at the beginning of your end step, create a number of food tokens equal to the number of non token creatures you had enter the battlefield under your control this turn. It also has, pay one colourless, sacrifice a food. Target creature gains indestructible until end of turn, and tap it. This is actually going to be a Golgari artifact deck. The main aim will be to use artifacts, and specifically food, as a resource. As we go through each category, we'll mention the food relevant cards, as well as the Master Chef without its food. We'll be using artifacts in all sections of the deck, from card draw to win conditions. First up is some recurrable creatures. As our commander doesn't give us any way to bring back creatures, we're looking for creatures that can do it themselves. We'll feed these to our sack outlets for value, and then bring them back turn after turn to repeatedly trigger our commander. While these are not artifacts themselves, they'll be making us plenty in the form of food with our commander. We also want to run some sacrifice outlets, so we can get the recurrable creatures in the graveyard. In total, you're looking for about 8 ways of sacrificing your stuff, or putting it into a chef's pot if you will. Some will be just for creatures, such as these cards. We can also run some cards that are specific for sacrificing food, as with any luck we should be making quite a few with our commander out. Having extra ways to use them will be very useful in the deck, as some of our win conditions will care about sacrificing artifacts. On that note, we can also run some ways that focus on sacrificing artifacts in general, as that will include some of our other artifacts that we're running in the deck, along with all the food that we're munching down. Moving on to card draw, first we'll talk about Golden Egg and Savvy Hunter. The Golden Egg itself is food, so very easily adds to our artifact count. And then Savvy Hunter turns all the excess food we make into card draw, so it's probably one of the best bits of card draw in the deck. For the rest of the card draw, we'll start by looking at things that synergize with the things that the deck is trying to do, with things like artifacts that can sacrifice themselves to draw cards, cards that sacrifice artifacts to draw cards, or have synergy with the egg tokens that we'll be making. On top of those, something like Reprocess can sacrifice all of our food, and anything else we have lying around to draw us a load of cards in a pinch. Things like Icker and Mycosynth Wellspring work well with that, and then also with the artifact sacrifice effects that we've already gone over. Sacrificing artifacts will come up again in our win conditions, so keep them in mind. And then we can also run some more traditional types of card draw, with things like Phyrexian Arena and Liliana Dreadhorde General. When it comes to ramp, we're looking to run at least 8 bits, but we can easily run more if they're on artifacts, as they'll play into what the deck is trying to do. We can start first with the Gilded Goose, which can either make us additional food tokens, or convert the ones we have into ramp of any colour. After those, I would look at things like Copper and Leiden Mere. While their rate may not be as good as a Llanowar Elves, having the additional artifact synergy will really come in handy. After these, I would look at a selection of mana rocks that will be consistent, and give us mana nice and early in the game, so things like Sol Ring, Signets, and the Talismans will do very well here. On top of those, we can look at running some mana rocks that sack themselves, as having this built in will be very handy when we need it. Then there is also Inspiring Statuary, as it'll turn all of our food into mana rocks that'll let us cast our non artifact spells. Let's move on to some ways of killing things. First up is ones that give us some additional food, with Bacon to a Pie and Taste of Death. I will admit these are not the most efficient, but the synergy with everything else the deck is trying to do does merit their include. After that, there's a removal on artifacts, or things that use artifacts to remove threats. I like these in the deck as they increase our artifact count while helping us answer our opponent's threats. And sometimes you can just win a game by hitting someone in the face with a noxious gear hulk. On to some board wipes, and again I'd look for synergy in the deck. We can run Friction Scriptures and Nev's Disc. I've looked for as much synergy as possible in my interaction section, but you can definitely run some bits that are more efficient if you're in a more competitive playgroup. We can also run some added recursion to get some bits back from the graveyard. Mere Retriever, Junk Diver, and Scrap Trawler can all get back some of our eggs, and can combo with Crack Clan Ironworks. However, explaining how that combo works is a video by itself, so I'll put links to an article that covers how it works down in the description below. And then with all the creatures that are going to be dying in this deck, Merin will also be a very solid include. One section to touch on before we move on to our win conditions, and that is token doublers. Unfortunately these aren't really budget friendly, at least until they see another reprint, but they can really help push our food production up a notch, so if you have them, they're definitely something to consider. Moving over to some dedicated win conditions, and we start with Disciple of the Vault and Marionette Master. These cards really pay us off for all the artifacts that we're going to be sacrificing in the deck, and will definitely reward us for all that hard work making artifacts that we're going to be doing. Another card that pays us off for all the sacrificing is Mazarek. This will really let our team grow into a lethal threat, and is one of the reasons we're running some of the free sack outlets we mentioned earlier. After that, we can look at running Cranial Plating and Dark Steel Juggernaut. Again, we're really planning on making a ton of artifacts in this deck, and both of these cards will do a great job at hitting our opponents in the life total. Cranial Plating attached to our Trampley Commander should lead to some commander damage wins. We can also weaponize the life gain that we get from our food tokens with Epicure of Blood and Sanguine Bond, allowing us to drain out our opponents. If you're running these, then I would also look at Fangrin Marauder to put some extra distance between us and our opponents. For some combos, you can look at running some creatures with Persist with Malira, as when combined with our Sacrifice Outlets, the creature with Persist will come back without the minus one minus one counter on it, meaning you can do it infinitely. When you do this with the commander out, it means you'll make infinite food tokens at the end of turn. 
With the other win conditions we've mentioned, you should then have no issues winning the game. Rounding off the deck with some utility lands, I'd start with Gingerbread Cabin as it can make us some extra food, then I'd look at things like High Market, Grim Backwards, Frexion Tower and Westville Abbey that are pretty solid stack outlets that come in the form of lands. The rest of your mana base will be very dependent on what you have available to you. We've recently released a video with some advice on building a deck with a budget mana base which might be of help. Until next time, please like, share and subscribe and let us know down in the comments if there are any commanders you'd like to see a deck tech on. Thank you very much for watching.